Over our two weeks, you learn that every resident has their own individual personality, just like every person does. And you learn and grow with them just as they're your friends. So when you first got there, if you hadn't been around animals, were you scared of them to start with? And how did you kind of overcome that? You look at a sheep and you go, oh, they're cute and cuddly. (laughs) But um, it definitely is a big like trust curve um, because all of the residents have experienced trauma from humans. And when you first get there, they are shy and timid, just like any other person would be too, rightfully so. Um, So you see over the two weeks we were there, they learned to trust us just as we learned to trust them. And it was really amazing to be able to see the first couple of days. I remember um, Maxine was, she's the sheep mom. Um, She wouldn't come up to any of us whenever we'd go into the pen. She'd take her kids away and go to the other side because she was nervous. Um, And then over the next two weeks, she slowly warmed up to us. And by the end, we'd be able to cuddle with her and pet her, play with her which was an amazing sight to see. I think it just shows like how important it is to spend time with these animals because even in just like the week or two weeks that we were there, we gained so much trust from them. And I can't even imagine what the care team up at 11 Arms is like if they've been there for like about a year or however long they've been there, they've had um, these connections with these residents for so much longer. And it just shows like, See, like like this picture too, it's just showing how much time and care that they put into like taking care of these residents. I think you were saying earlier that there was a story about when you first got to Love and Arms and you were asking about the cows. And yes. <laughs> so tell us about that and how things change once you spend time with them. So when we usually think of cows, we think cows need to be milked. And it wasn't even getting to the sanctuary. It was the drive from the airport to Chartrina's house with Shal and Uncle. And I asked him, I was like, so on the sanctuary, do you milk your cows? Um, And he was like, no, because you don't need to milk a cow unless they're pregnant, just like any other mammal. They don't give milk unless they're pregnant. And that was such a simple fact that completely went over my head, as I'm sure it went over so many other people's heads day to day, um, that the things and animal products we think are so natural really aren't natural at all. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And Mihika and Mansi, thank you again for sharing your story and your experiences. I think for a lot of us in the community, uh, this is, you know, this may be our first time getting such a close, I guess, uh, look at animals in such a way. I think uh, most of our lives, our only interactions with animals are via, you know, animal companions such as dogs and cats or going to the zoo or like petting zoos. And, um, and, you know, I think this gives us a better look at, you know, animals in a way that shows that they have personalities that uh, each of them have their own individual needs and wants. And so I think it's, you know, wonderful uh, what Love and Arms is doing and what all of you are doing with, you know, this organization. Um, How has your life changed after volunteering at Love and Arms? You know, obviously you were volunteering at the sanctuary for two weeks, which is a you know, a long amount of time and you had a time to interact with all these different, um, you know, residents. And so how was like your life changed since then? And maybe your outlook. Growing up, Jane, I used to think that even though I was not vegan, I was vegetarian. I used to think I was doing everything in my power to be as conscious as I was. Um, I grew up with on the principle of Ahimsa and I thought I was doing everything I could to not harm any living beings but there's always more you can do. And the two weeks being immersed in love and arms just opened my eyes even more to how much I can be aware of my surroundings and of the people and living beings around me. I think like Mihika said, we were both vegetarian going into it. We weren't vegan. And when Mihika told me we would have to eat vegan for two weeks, I was like very surprised. Well, I wasn't surprised, but I was just taken aback and I was confused as like how that would work because I had never eaten on a vegan diet before. And I wasn't like, honestly, I wasn't very looking forward to it because everyone knows like the vegan stereotypes. They think all you eat is salad and all you eat is like lettuce, vegetables, that's it. But when we went, we ate such a variety of foods. And I think people People don't realize how many options there actually are um, for vegans to eat different foods. And so we honestly didn't think we were going to stay vegan. But I think coming back, we've realized that being immersed in the 
experience that we were with like the residents and everything and then also watching these documentaries and learning these different facts on the environment on our health I think it just had such a great impact that we realized that we want to do everything we can to keep up this diet.